Well, there's one elephant, certainly there it is, a young bull, I think, and the rest of its herd has probably wandered off into the bush here to the south of the road. He's uh, busy throwing sand in his eye. I'm not sure why he's throwing sand in his eye. Perhaps he's a cross. Why are you throwing sand in your eye? He's obviously not throwing it in his eye, he's throwing it on his head. Elephants do that, they like the feeling on their skin, and it apparently is supposed to help them with ectoparasites. I'm not so sure that they don't just do it because it feels nice. He's digging there with his foot. <laughs> oh, there's another one I can hear. I just heard the flapping of an ear. We won't worry about that. Let's just watch this one. He might also be picking out some roots that he wants to eat. Or just tossing sand. He's being very sweet. I mean, he's quite close to us. He's only about 10 meters away, 30 feet or so. Completely relaxed. He opened his ears out slightly as we came up because I wasn't paying attention. I was yakking away about something or other. What are you doing? Oh, yes, what a vicious boy. Sonia, you say, yes, you love elephants. Well, Sonia, we love elephants too. In fact, these days we love any animal that we can find on drive. Things have been a little thin on the ground of late uh, because there's so much abundance for the animals to eat and so there's so many different places that they can be. A young bull like this is especially fun because he's a little bit cheeky uh, but he's certainly not in any way dangerous and he's also, of course, quite amusing because he will do sort of childish things like for example, you just saw him rubbing his bottom on a tree or digging in a fairly incompetent fashion and then every so often getting irritated and having a sulk and shaking his head at us. He's digging quite a hole there and he hasn't tried to eat anything. Lexi, you want to know if an elephant could survive without its tusks? And Lexi, the answer is yes, there are many elephants that survive without tusks. There are many Asiatic elephants that survive without tusks. And most females, or many females, don't have tusks in the Asiatic elephant. And in these elephants, you know, I have seen many who are either genetically predisposed to not having tusks, or who have broken and lost their tusks, and they get, a, they get by just fine. It's obviously more convenient to have tusks. That's a wonderful shot. And it's convenient, Lexi, not so much because of the need to defend themselves. It is convenient. It really helps them. When they want to snap branches, when they want to dig the bark out of the trunks of trees and that sort of thing. But they're remarkably resilient and they can survive without tusks. They can even survive with half a trunk. There are a few elephants that we see every so often that have missing pieces of the trunk and they've lost that prehensile tip it's able to so effectively pick things up and yet they somehow manage to survive so yes tusks they can do without obviously easier if they have them now this chap is reaching he might stand on his back legs <laughs> That's probably about 8 meters into the air, or so, 25 feet. And of course the great misnomer, or misconception, not misnomer, misconception is that giraffe have the tallest reach of any animal out here, and they don't, you know. A big bull elephant doing exactly what this little bull elephant is doing is able to reach even higher up than a giraffe. You can see this tree has uh, not escaped the attentions of elephants very often. It has been mangled and fed upon many, many times.
Ah, somebody called One Production. I wonder if that's a relation of One Direction. What do you think? I wonder. Um, one Production. Yes, the production arm of One Direction. You say, you say, why is he flying solo? Well, he's flying, he's not actually. The rest of his herd is around here. We can hear them grumbling in the distance, going, I heard the ear flap of another one not too far from here, and we've certainly seen three or four cross the road before we arrived here. So he is a, a young bull, so he will spend time on the fringes of the herd. He won't necessarily have to be inside the <laughs> herd. And Fergus has just pointed out that, in fact, some of them are coming across the road as we speak just behind us. So his need to be in the middle of the herd is now much reduced as he gets a little bit older, but at the same time, he's not going to move too far away from them. Let's move a little bit forward for him. Oh, he's actually just going to disappear, I think, if I start the engine. 